Eve's in person and online. My name is Elizabeth, the education coordinator for Marlene's Market in Delhi. Um, definitely check out our Marlene's newsletter where you get to know about monthly sales, articles, recipes, and of course, wonderful classes. And definitely check out an amazing article by Lessa, and that is located on page six. So without further ado, I would love to introduce to you our wonderful presenter. You've worked with us for many years now. I have, yes. Yeah. Awesome. It's great. so glad to be here. And, and, and we're here hybrid, so it's very, very wonderful. So understanding your animal's end of life journey with Lessa Alexander, animal communicator of heart and soul with animals. Let's give her a virtual round of applause and in person. <laughs> so how many of you have animals? And would you say what kind of animals you have? Dog and cat? A cat? Okay. So do you ever wonder what your animals are thinking? Yeah. Yeah. Do you wonder what they're thinking? Oh, and they Certainly. So my name is Lessa Alexander, and I'm an animal communicator, animal energy healer, and author. And I left my teaching career so that I can do this work with animals. I was called to do this, but it didn't start there. I'd say some, I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but maybe 40 years ago or more, there I was in the Himalayas at the mouth of the Ganges. I had walked out of the glacially cold Ganges River, which sparkles just the way here in the Northwest, our water, glacial water sparkles, sopping wet. And at that moment, I felt anointed by Mother Ganges, Mother Divine, Mother Earth, and Mother Nature. And I felt this devotion to serve Mother Earth and all her creatures until many, many, many years later that I actually was called to work with animals. But when I got back from this trip that I took to India, my dog that I had, who had would leave with friends, I was quite neglectful. I was young. I didn't know how to take care of an animal. I didn't know how to take care of myself. The dog ran away many times. This time the dog ran away and never came back. And I realized I was not taking care of this animal the way this animal deserved. And I decided that I would not have an animal until I was able to do that. So many animals later, another dog. And this was this dog that you see, my soulmate dog, Hinsa, Scottish Terrier. But two years after he died, he came to me and he said, you need to do animal communication. I was meditating in the morning. I mean, spirit. And I thought, I don't do animal communication. And he reminded me that I had spent 14 years studying earth medicine, a part of which was journeying with animals, doing vision quests with animals, doing ceremonial blends where I, I was called by a particular animal, made a bundle, and, and then became that animal for a while. And then he reminded me that I had been working, doing intuitive readings for people for like 30 years and working with gemstones. And all of this could be applied. So he was relentless as um, Terry can be. And I did some investigation and realized, oh my gosh, I've been doing this for a long time. So then I further invested in my training and I'm going to say thanks, do a little shout out to Wanda Buckner who introduced me to Healing Touch for Animals. And I've been a certified practitioner. And now um, I am retired from teaching and do this work part-time. And I help people and animals with wellness issues in conjunction with veterinarians, we find out what's going on for the animal from the animal's perspective. I work behavior issues, and my specialty is senior and end of life. And that's what I'm gonna focus on today. So we love our elder animal companions so very much. They come into our homes either as puppies or as rescue animals, and somehow they make their way into our heart and our soul on a very deep level. So when they start to age and when they start to come to the end, 
That's a very tender, tender time. So the first thing that I think needs to be done in this situation is to really decide for yourself, how are you going to do this? My tendency is to do um, more alternative natural kinds of um, healing and medicine. And I am very, very grateful for allopathic medicine that has, I broke my foot, you know, you could, you could do all kinds of energy work, which does help, but you need a cast or you need crutches, you need all that kind of help. So it's not, I'm not against it. I do feel like we, we have a paradigm, you know, that's, especially now as we, we veterinary medicine becomes corporatized, that is, uh, that is a lot, um, driven a lot by the pet food industry and pharmaceuticals. Um, and I, my belief and my experience is that a lot of the, most of the pet food that is out there is not nutritionally supportive to animals to the maximum extent that they need. And in some cases, even harmful if you explore what they put in there and it's not designed for their teeth and their gut. So as a result, animals are not as healthy and then they, then they get medicated and a lot of interventions and and towards the end sometimes they are quite sick and they may be suffering and so that the again the paradigm is that we help them to the other side when they start to suffer what i have found is that you can change an animal's diet even when they're really old um, i will speak that i had a cat who was um, 20 years old and he was not doing very well. I decided I would change his diet. And within a few weeks, he it was as if he went back two years, as if he had gained two years. His coat got really shiny. He had more energy. He was able to jump on the couch more easily. And he lived almost till 22. We can do that. Um, and the other thing is that... Um, as much as it's important to support animals at the end of life if they're suffering, because we have intervened and we have, and we have in a sense, given them more life and in nature, they may not have been able to live that long, that sometimes they, because of medications, they're not coded to, to know how to deal with that kind of physical situation and to suffer. And it is, we have a responsibility, I believe, to um, help them in those cases. That being said, as an animal communicator, I have never had an animal say, yes, I want euthanasia. Every single animal I've ever spoken to wants to pass on their own. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that choice. But when we have elders, animals, we need to decide which what, how we're going to do this? Are we going to allow them to live into an old age and become um, uh, less functional? Are we going to be willing to do it? And this um, talk is more geared for the people who are willing to to to, to be with their animal to the very end. And um, and I have had many situations where people have come to me and said, "Okay, brought my animal to the vet. They went down." That thing euthanized. Let's check in with with the animal. The animal is. I'm not ready to go. So many times, I'm not ready to go. I've also had situations with animals are ready to go, and they say, you know, whether you help me or go, it's it's it doesn't matter that much because I'm ready now. So these are things that that I that I think it's important to think about, and that if you do choose to really walk that path like you would with a family member, right? When you have elders, we need to walk with them until the end. It's important to know that you'll need more time, more energy, and more financial resources to help them through. So as animals age, a lot of times you don't notice right away. And some of the the signposts are they become disoriented, they start yelling or barking incessantly, they don't follow commands. 
this is often they're losing their hearing, they're losing their sight. Maybe they're having some dementia episodes, um, vomiting, constipation, incontinence, weight loss or gain. Again, digestive system is changing. Um, they may have growths. And then of course they're, they can have muscle atrophy, arthritis. Um, they can start having pain, so they're not able to, to have the mobility that before. And so once we notice these things, we can we realize they are now in what I call the last chapters. They're heading in the direction of their, their bodies are gonna to start to deteriorate more and more. And it's important to understand, oh, these are the things that are happening. Uh, and then what happens at some point, they reach a level where their system, you know, organs start to go down in functionality, a system, you know, called system, respiratory system, things start to go down. And they, when those things go down, they, they're, they appear to be like, do very well. And um, when several things go down at once, the body, which recalibrates, let's say um, one of their kidneys isn't doing so well. So the body recalibrates and the whole system adjusts to that and they reach a new normal. And this keeps happening as they get older. But when you have the kidney and the respiration, maybe their, their digestion and they're not getting enough of a particular supplement of some kind or, or uh, whatever they need for their system, they will crash and it will appear like, oh my gosh, this looks like it's it. But I think it's really important them to give them a chance for their bodies to recalibrate and reach a new normal. Just like it's really important on a spiritual level to allow them to decide whether they want to keep going. So I, when they go down like that, I think that, that our, the paradigm is to just help them along but I, I invite you to give them a chance to rally. Um, so I, I'll share with you um, a couple of animals um, that I worked with. Um, one animal went really, really went down and I worked with her and she wasn't eating. So they put her on appetite stimulants and they put her on anti-nausea meds plus the, the meds she was taking just to be able to survive. And this um, cat said to me, she said, I I can't feel anything and I can't, I'm so out of it. I can't even, I know I'm I'm done, with it, but I can't see where the death portal is. So with along with the vet, the person um had the vet slowly titrate her off some of the the meds. And so she didn't so if she didn't eat, she didn't eat. And she could eat when she wanted to, and they weren't stimulating her appetite. And this cat had weeks where she was able to connect with her person, where they played, she ate, she didn't. And then her person knew, ah, it's time. And then you could tell, she could tell that it's time. And on the way to the vet, she passed in the car. Another situation, I was working with an animal who had had cancer, had had um, parts of her liver removed. She was on meds um, to be able to, to uh, function. She was also on other meds, pain meds and other sorts of meds. And this dog said to me, she let me know, she said, I can't feel, I'm so medicated, I can't feel anything. And I don't wanna be here without feeling the joy and the sun and you just, that sensory and the emotional experience was dulled. So again, with veterinary support, they titrated her off pain meds. They started her on, um, what is it, CBD. And then when I checked in with her, she said, I'm so much happier, she said, I can feel life again. And yes, because I feel the joy of living. So when they go back and forth and they shut down and they come back, this can go on for weeks. It can go on for months and it could even go on for years. And um, and I'll share with you about a, a, a little bit later about a, a cat who who went on for quite a while. And then we wanna know what we can do for animals when they when they start at, on that last chapter. The first thing I always say is take care of yourself. That's always the, the rapture of caregivers. Take care of yourself. 
um, you know, get the support you need, you know, make sure you, you know, you have all the, you know, food, sleep, you know, all the things in place, exercise, but also have emotional support and feel your feelings. It's important to feel your feelings and then get support around that and um, support groups, individuals. There's all kinds of ways to get support. Get professional support for your animals. And I'll talk about that next. Make sure that their changing needs are being met and then make enclosure. These are things that you can do for your animals to help them in, in that last chapter. So get professional support. For your animals, How, once they get older, if you can get a vet that does home visits, it's really helpful because it's very stressful for them to go to the vet, especially if you're choosing to let them really to to go in their at their own pace. Also, it's really helpful to have a vet that might do home euthanasia on board. Thank you. And one thing that I recommend once you realize you're getting in that phase line all this up ahead of time because as it gets closer it becomes very emotionally taxing and it's hard for us sometimes to really um, track and do all the things we need to do so prepare in advance so that when you're closer to that time you can be really present for your animal and not worry about all the the details and logistics have an animal communicator on board have a chiropractor acupuncturist massage therapist you know whatever you your animal needs if they have if they have arthritis, some of this is really helpful. Energy healing works. When we have our animals and humans, our energy central line, we can access our resources to navigate whatever's in front of us. When you don't, it's a lot harder. So that's really helpful. Homeopathy, can't say enough how much it's helped my animals. And then a nutritionist, you know, whether it's your vet or, or a specific animal nutritionist, nutritional needs change. And um, it's really nice to have that for your animals. I, for, I worked with a, with a dog who um, was on a raw food diet. And as he got older, um, he started having um, diarrhea, a chronic diarrhea. And so when we worked with him, and you know, this is with some influence in his medicine, he was, was, wasn't functioning the way it went before. So by pre-cooking some of the food, it sort of like pre-digested it for him a little, little bit. And he, once they started um, cooking some of his food up or you know having it not be raw, he stopped having the diarrhea. So there's all kinds of things um, that it's not too late and that to, to just have that awareness of what their needs are. So these are some basic needs that I think that all animals need, but as they get older, they still need good food. They still need exercise. They still need calm and rest. So uh, with exercise, sometimes um, I worked with a, a couple who walked their dog probably close to four miles a day. As the dog started aging, the dog still really wanted to go for the walks, but would, would start coming home and getting really stiff. And, you know, you could see when he, that he appeared to be in pain. So they weren't tracking that because he seemed so happy to go for his walks. So what we, what we worked with, what I recommended was to start walking less and walking slower and to, to play with that until you got to the point where after your dog came home, had a nap, when he got up, he still had some mobility so that he wasn't in pain. On the other side, I've worked with people who say, oh my gosh, he's stiff, he's old, we just you know, started to tell us we really just need to let him rest all the time. And in that situation, if, if we not old, we will get really stiff and it will muscles will atrophy even more quickly. So in that case, it was the same thing. We started by incrementally increasing the amount of walking the, and then at the pace of walking until the dog so, showed some signs of distress and then backed up a little bit and found that that Goldilocks place. So these are seem like really obvious things, but again, we're so close to somebody, we, it's hard to see. And when we're seeing them getting older, it's even harder to see because it's so emotional. Um, mental stimulation, oh, calm and rest. Um, that's the other thing. It's 
people forget how important it is for, especially as animals age, they need more rest. They need more calm. So they need to have breaks from exercise. They need breaks from um, mental stimulation. They need breaks from even emotional connecting when they just, they just need time to be. So that's really important. And again, on the other hand, they don't need to be just left alone because they're old now. They still need to be interacted with. They still need to play. They still need to have mobility. With mental stimulation, um, it will not need, you know, your species, like what kinds of stimulation they need, what's going to push them too far physically, but there are a lot of different toys, a lot of different strategies or things, ways that you can play with them for dogs to get their sniff quarter met. I think we've all, maybe all of us have done this and certainly we've seen people who are just pulling their dog along and their dog is just dying to smell. You know, sometimes they're with on a bicycle, sometimes it's just a quick walk, sometimes they're just on their phone. You know, we all do things differently, but please remember that when you're created for something and you don't get to do what you're created for, that is painful. So I was, uh, worked with a couple of different dogs who were, who were no longer mobile, who were very close to their end. And their people, one of them would take the dog on a wagon out for a walk. The other person put them in a little baby carriage. And it's not just the neighborhood walk, but it's the new places, you know, go, they're going to go to a whole new place or, or one of their like long walks, special, you know, let's say they have a beach walk. So, uh, so one of the per people would actually take this, this dog and, and take them to the beach and then let them just lay on the sand for a while and smell all the smells around him. But, you know, uh, just a little bit before he passed. So we can do these things for our animals. They still have these needs. And the same thing with emotionally, they still need to relate. You know, again, that that middle ground, too much, not enough. And then when it comes to it, like, like spiritual purpose, you know, all animals have a purpose in the earth. And, but domesticated animals also have a purpose with us humans. So I believe that animals have those purposes and that's what gives them a meaning to live. And as they get older, they're not able to do some of their, what I call obvious jobs anymore. And, and what I, from my work, what I understand is that animals do their work with the earth till the very end, that they can do it to the very end, their soul work. Um, but Sometimes they can't do like the sentry work or you know the the guarding work because they just don't have the energy. There was a cat who um, was elderly. His people said to him, you know, oh, it's okay. You don't. All you have to do is love and be loved. You don't have to do anything else. And then they had ended up having a rat problem, and they didn't realize that the, that the cat door. The cat was an indoor outdoor cat. Um, that the rats were coming in through the, the cat door. So until they figured that out, they had rats in the house and they had traps. So they were having to kill rats. And so they said to the cat who was a superb um, mouser ratter in his, in his day, they said, we think you can help. And, and the cat said something to the effect of, well, I am retired. It hurts to jump up on the couch. So I, I don't think so. I think you're going to have to take care of it. One. The, the book manager putting the little collar with a magnet on it so that the cat come in and out and nobody else could but they can't do their jobs always and yet to respect them that you are we're still you st we're still having that we're being loving, loving and that's such a big gift that thank you for that gift and i know you're doing some other things quote, spiritually, that I don't know about. Thank you for that gift. And they also need patience, time, and love at the end because they get learn um, cats and they start losing their hearing. I, I worked with a cat and who was driving their person crazy, yowling, you know, just 
insanely yowling. And when I worked the cat, what it turned out is that he had lost his hearing and he couldn't hear any himself. So he actually yelled so loud that he could feel the, the vibration. The other reason I've uh, seen that um, experience that, that animals will, will bark incessantly or yowl is they have dementia. So they start kind of not, not having appropriate responses anymore. And that's difficult. So it does ask of us a great deal of patience. So I want to talk a little bit about um, quality of life indicators, but also about in terms of meeting your animals changing needs, but also um, being able to monitor the quality of life indicators, you know, are they getting close to the end? Is to know, your, and I said already, to know your species breed and their aging propensities, because those are different depending on the animal. Of course, no, you know your animal com companion better than anybody else. So, so become aware of like, are they changing? Is this their normal behavior? And of course, keep an eye out for any kind of changes and get professional support. If, you know, if you're not sure, get support. And as far as um, quality of life, you know, at the very end there, are they having quality of life? The what I remember learning in my training was are the, if they stop eating and drinking, they stop their toileting, they stop moving around and they're having difficulty breathing. That's usually indicated that, that this, they're at their end and this is not eating and drinking, they're not moving around, they're not toileting. They're, they don't have social ability anymore. They are not enjoying their life from what you can perceive. They This is the dementia aspect, especially. They're very uncertain. They don't really know what's going on. And certainly their respiration, but they're having some respiratory issues. These are times to consider, is this, is this the last chapter here? And again, they can navigate this. I do believe animals have shown me they all know how to die. And I believe we humans know in our culture, we may have forgotten, but they do know how to do this. And then comes the question, do we help them or do they go on their own? And having someone having all those supports, those professional supports for palliative care to, at the end, I've been so surprised at how many animals we think they're, it's, it's, it's the end. And then they get all these alternative supports along with the vet. And this animal, if you weren't years, sometimes they live nine months, certain is the end. It, it's given them that kind of support and then also at the end, if you choose to help them to allow, do you want to do that or not? And this is a that I haven't always done what I prefer because I didn't have the emotional bandwidth to do it. So this is a very unique decision between you and your animal. What animals have shown me is that if you approach this with a, I don't know, you do the, then it doesn't matter what it's two weeks, two months, or two years. Once they're they're in that that phase where they're dying, the most important thing is that you come from your heart, and. That being said, I would like to share with you um, a couple of stories about animals. I, I, I was working with a client. I had worked with her other animals before, and we were now on this aged cat. He was an outdoor cat. He started to lose his hearing height, and he had some urinary tract issues, and he went down. So she brought to the vet. The vet said, I think we need to euthanize. And so she wanted to check first with me, just, you know, with that and with the, oh, he's not ready to go. So she decided to, to work with him. 
which meant a little more effort on her end. And then about a year later, she called again. He had gone down. Vet said, I think it's really time. And he was now definitely eyesight. Hearing was quite impaired. She could go outside with him because they had coyotes and raccoons out, so he couldn't be left on his own. She had to, there was a little more effort for her. And he said, well, he said, I'd like to hang around longer, but if you need to do this, I'm ready. I can go. So she thought long and hard. She decided to stay to stay with him. Another year went by. Was about all, all these three times that she contacted him were in December. A year went by and she thought, okay, he's like really gone down. And now he said, he said, yes, I'm ready to go now. And when she made that decision for that year, she knew she wouldn't be going on vacation that year. She knew she would have to hire people to help take care of them while she was at work. And she knew she had to put more into it. And she, and afterwards, she was so glad she did that and did not regret it for a minute. So there's that situation. Another situation uh, was a an emergency call with a little dog that had um, bloody stool had a she had a big lipoma on her belly. Vet said time to go, so they called and the dog was oh no, dachshund no, um, I'm not ready to go. Um, and that's what we said and we did some energy work with her and this condition cleared up. Then about nine months later, another close call, same thing happened. She got through it, and this little this group this thing keeps growing. So, so it's it's not a miracle. It's just giving them the support they need, taking the being giving them the opportunity to rally. And what I tell people, um, when it comes to to euthanasia, is if you look and you see this is too much. This is too much for the dog. This is too much or the cat or the horse, or this is too much for them. It's too much for me. And you feel in your heart to heart that this is okay. I always say, go ahead and line it up, line it up and give, give it 48 hours. So they have time to rally if they want to. They have time to pass if they are able to, if that's what they want. They have time to savor and say goodbye to the precious, precious life. So I, so that's something that has happened also on, on several occasions where we, we you know, was like, okay, it's time, all right. And then again, I'm sharing with you what I've experienced. And then I also wanted to share a couple of situations where, like I say, Every animal, I believe, wants to, to go through that death portal on their own. And I believe it's a spiritual thing. I believe it's that we have a life and we and that death is a a great teacher and it's a process for you know for our souls to learn something about the process. I don't know, you know, that's my belief. And um so I really think think that, that that I understand all that. But there were two situations where euthanasia was, you know, it was just so the, uh, the animal said yes. So I worked with a, a dog who had been on meds for many years to support her capacity to live. The meds started having a side effect, which was causing her a great deal of suffering. So either you kept her on the meds and she suffered terribly and would die of suffering, or you took her off the meds so wouldn't have suffering, but then she wouldn't be able to make it. So either way was a lot of suffering. And when I shared that with the dog and she understood because she was suffering, she said, yes, please help me. So that that's one of those cases where, yes. Another situation was more emotionally based. It was a dog who was at, was at the end. It was, a I believe it was an illness that this dog had. And um, one of the, in a family, one of the, the parents thought that you should help her along. The other one thought she should go on her own. And then the kids were caught in between and it was starting to break up the family. And the dog finally said, she said, it, 
it doesn't matter whether it's two two days, two weeks, or two months. I know I'm going there. It's all right. She didn't want her family to break up over her. So animals are amazing. They they want this end to be sacred for everybody. Okay. So the other thing that's really important in this process is saying goodbye. And I've had several experiences where um, one was a family, this poodle who had cancer, and they really wanted her to help let her go on her own. And she started to go down and then would come back and go. And it was just, it, it almost was like, well, this seems like she's really ready to go. So I worked with her and it turned out that one of the people in the family hadn't let go, hadn't said goodbye. So what I recommended was that they let the animal hear, know what's going on. I mean, this is just like a, something I, I always tell in every talk I have is talk to your animals and you're saying that you already do. That's excellent because they do understand. Understanding them, that's a little bit more difficult, but talk to them, let them know everything that's going on. You know, if you're going to um, do sub Q with them, let them know and prepare them with images of it, like desensitize them through imagery. But that's a whole, you, you know, that's, that's a whole nother thing, but just let them know what's going on. But at this, this, this last piece, get together as a family, tell stories. Oh, I remember the time when you came in. It's like, remember that time we were on a walk and you, on an off-leash walk, and then you came and you healed next to me of your own choice. How wonderful that was. Oh, do you remember that time you tore up the couch? I was, you so you, you know, remember when you clawed up my antique chair, you know, you, you remember all those different stories that make up your life together. Let, let them know how much you appreciate them. You know, you know, you can be that and then say, it's okay for me to go. It's okay to go. And, and that asks of us to go deep. The, the thing about relationships with animals, they're, so, they're unique and the animals touch us in ways that humans can't. And when we love so deeply, the grief of that loss, it's just heartbreaking. But to love like that, that's the, that's sort of the, the conundrum of love and 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 going that deep and that's the thing with animals i feel like when we can love them in that way and then let them go we allow ourselves to love so deeply because we know it's going to really hurt when we let go i think that makes us better people you know that and many other things we learn with animals so these are important pieces so in this family we mentioned i mentioned this one person you know hasn't said goodbye and they did, they gathered as a family, they did that. And literally within days, the dog went down and stayed down and another situation where on the way to the vet, she passed. And then I'm trying to think of the other one. Um, yeah. Anyway, so they're saying goodbye is really, really important. And then I want to, before we, we go to take a little break and, and go to our more um, experiential part of this presentation, to talk about forgiveness. People worry, it's like, am I doing right by my beloved animal companion? What if I made a mistake? Here's the thing. We're humans. We're going to make mistakes. We, we cannot do everything perfectly and animals know that they know that as long as we are coming from our heart and doing the best we can that nobody who could ask anything more of you and I know that I've been at euthanasias and I've experienced 
uh, with us times when they feel like, oh, they, they waited too long, they or they euthanized too quickly, too soon, and there was this tremendous amount of suffering around it. But I can assure you that if you come from your heart, again, that the same phrase that animals that said, when we are ready to die, whether it's two days, two weeks, two months, if you're coming from your heart, that's what matters. And you are forgiven before any, you even do anything. You are forgiven. And that's really important to remember because it's so hard. And this is my work. And it's so hard for me. It's, you know, even if I know this, but I, I will say that I had experience with one, with my dog that I just, suffered, I felt terrible for two years. And then with my cat during the pandemic, I'm not ahead of time, which is why I say, do as I say, not as I do, because I had made assumptions, forgetting that everything changed with the pandemic. And I ended up doing things that I would do differently if I had the chance. But this time, because of this work, because of this, because of just trusting the relationship with my cat, I didn't suffer for as long and have that, that, that torn up feeling of having done something wrong. I still grieved terribly and still miss him, but you are forgiven. So I wanted to let you know that in this work that I do, uh, working with health and wellness, behavior, senior and end of life, that if there's, if you're interested in more, um, I could definitely, um, we could definitely find a way to do that. But before I go there, I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you, those who are here in person. Thank you, those of you who are here on Zoom. Because if you're here, I know that you care a lot about your animals and that you have deep relationships with your animals. And I really do. I believe when we have those deep relationships, not the relationships where we project onto animals or you know think they're objects, they're like, you know, we own, you know, like a like a stuffed animal or something, that you respect them and love them, that you become better people and better people in the better world. So I thank you for that. I thank you for coming and supporting our means that has such so many wonderful services in the community. Um, I'm very fond of this educational program. I've, I've gone for many different classes here myself. And then also thank you for supporting this work that I do since this is something that I'm called to. And um, it, it allows me to be of service to you in a way that I'm, I'm called to do. So in that light, I'd like to offer you a checklist, which I call the vacation checklist or when, when I'm away checklist. Um, it's a little outdated in that I have people print a, a photo, but I do better with actual a hard copy of something, but you know, you could do it on your phone, but it's a bunch of little steps you can take before you, while you're gone, when you come back from being away from your animals, like on vacation or on a trip. So if you're doing that, um, I'm happy to send you that as a thank you. And if you're on Zoom, please um, put it in the chat. And thank you, Elizabeth, for taking care of that. And if you're here in person, I'm going to pass this around if, you, if you're interested in doing that. And then if you're interested in, in, um, in going a little deeper with this work, I first would like to, to say that I'm offering a monthly group meeting where we get together and um, explore some ways to support animals and ourselves when animals are going through senior and end of life. And um, it's it's really affordable and accessible. It's the third month, the third Saturday of the month at 10 a.m. Pacific time. So um, that um, you can check that out on the on my website if you're interested. And um, and also if you want to go a little deeper and see if there's any work that you want to do with me uh, other than in addition to that, um, also put in your name that you would like a. Um, senior and end of life exploration session where we get together for half an hour on the phone. It's a complimentary session and um, I'll, I'm going to hand out four of those. And so if you want to be interested, I'll send 
that a little, little few little questions fill out, and then we can get together on the phone and talk about the top issues that you have with your animals and ways that you can support them. So if you'd like to do that, also check off that you want the complimentary consultation that um, make sure you let me know. And then I'm just gonna throw in one more thing. Um, my book is coming out, should be coming out, any the ebook on Amazon and the hard copy should be uh, uploaded um, Friday. And if you wanna be on my launch team and review it, also just let me know and I can send you a PDF. And uh, we'll also then put the ebook on Amazon for 99 cents for about a week, have folks sign up and then write me a review. I would really appreciate that. Uh, and you don't have to read the whole book for that. You can just go through and see, you know, how you respond to it. So that those are all different ways that we can we can work together some more. So the next part we're going to do is um, before we do a guided meditation, I just wanted to see if there were any questions. And Elizabeth, if you could shout out if there are any questions on chat. Um, and if you all have any questions, those of you who are here. That was really good. Sorry, I needed that energetic meeting. So um, two weeks ago, we had to say goodbye. So um, the forgiveness piece is the best because you do kind of torment yourself. You do torment, we do torment ourselves. And, and much. And you're right about being so open hearted to love and to experience that love. And then to have to make a decision on that. But, I always feel like they teach us about life and they teach us about kindness. They do. Just I agree. You. <laughs> and and you know, um, a spiritual counselor friend, lovely, lovely man had leukemia, and and his when he prepared for his end, um, he, after he died, he showed up. I happened to be outdoors. You know, sorry, folks, but I was picking up, doing poop patrol, and then this <laughs> this incredible man showed up in spirit after he passed. And he, what he told me was that death is a gift at the end of that. It, it, that we, our culture demonizes it in a sense, or, or you know, whatever. It, it's, it's we, we, we fight it. And of course, we're coded to fight it. You know, our, we have the coding to stay alive. Absolutely. You know, that's, that's, the, that's the programming, so to speak. But on a spiritual level, it really is a gift. And so um, if we open to that gift, it is incredible. You know, it's just incredible what I've learned and how I've become a better person because of that. So if there are no questions, we're going to go ahead and move on. And what I'd like to do just because I, of my work, is just honor everybody who's engaged with this today and just ask the, what I call the healing knowing field to or we could use another language, depending on what your beliefs are. We can say, we can ask the helping spirits, angels, guardians, guides, um, ancestors, all those who work for uh, the best and highest good of all that are concerned with this, um, what we're doing here today, to, to just create a, like a bubble or a space that is, that is spiritual, energetically safe, contained, and, um, where we can we can journey to a tender place inside ourselves um, and to talk with our animals. So um, start by just getting very comfortable in your seat or wherever you are. And we're going a little over, so my apologies, but we started a little late, so hopefully that will not be a problem. Just relax, maybe take three deep breaths. Listen to the sounds outside the room that you're in. Listen to the sounds inside the room. Listen to the sound of your own breath.
and to listen to the sound of your own heartbeat. And now go to your heart center and place into your heart center everything that you love. People, places, things, memories, moments in time. And your heart center, your spiritual heart center is in the middle of your chest called the heart chakra center. And allow yourself to feel all that love just pouring out and allow that love to turn into light. And to saturate your whole being That's right. And now send a part of that love down to the core of the earth and ask the earth if you might anchor in. Staying anchored, bring that light back up to your feet, up your spine, and let this saturate your whole being. And now taking that light that is love, send a beam of it up to your star, your star that holds your spiritual source. And ask if you might connect in there. And then bringing that energy down and allowing this energy to move all the way down to the core of the earth, all the way up to your star and back. And now take this light that is love and create a chamber in the center of your chest, in your heart center, your energy heart center. And you'll notice that in this chamber, there is a door. Open the door and walk through and you'll find that you're on a path. Follow the path. Keep going. And then you'll See an opening a place, a very special place. Maybe it's a beach, maybe it's a mountain, maybe it's a meadow. Maybe there's a little gazebo there. And once you're in this place, just look around for a minute. And you'll know somebody coming from a distance. And this is one of your animals who has volunteered to help you understand. This perspective, this process of leaving the body, what it is like for the animal. And see who shows up. Maybe it's an animal in your life right now. Maybe it's one that has passed. and allow them to come close and take a moment to connect. And now ask them to show you their life path. What that looks like for them. Ask them to show you their helpers, the helpers that help them along their life, but also the helpers that help them to come go to the other side. Let them show you what that experience is like for them. And this may feel like your imagination, but science has shown that 
the imaginal realm is just as real to our brains as is this realm. If this is an animal in your life right now, ask them, do you know how to transition when your time comes? Or if it's an animal that has already transitioned, ask them, do they know how, do they know how to do that? however that transition occurred. Ask the animal if they know where they're going as they transition, where they're, where they're going through and after, do they know? Ask your beloved animal to show you what is it you need to see to best support them. Ask them how you can help them. Ask them what they need and want from you. And finally, ask them, what would they like you to know about the gift at the end of life? Thank them for showing up. Thank yourself for your willingness to face this really painful time, whether it was in the past or it's, or it's in the future. Thank yourself. Thank them. And then ask them to go about their way back to their bodies if they're in, embodied and back to wherever they, they reside now if they have passed to their rightful place. Thank the special place and make your way back along the path into the chamber in your heart. The door closes, the chamber diffuses, and you are in your heart center, listening to the sound of your own heartbeat.
listening to the sound of your breath. Listening to the sounds inside the room. And to listening to the sounds outside the room. And coming present to the here and now. In body here. And when you're ready, open your eyes. So because we're out of time, I would normally see if anybody had any comments and would say a little bit about how, when, um, you know, people say, well, do you work with animals after they passed you? Um, but I also feel that once someone passes, they have a journey that's really not our place. We're here, they're there. But sometimes there's things that aren't resolved. So it's important to resolve those. And I know that in when I've worked with people um, that, you know, again, this is this may not be what everyone believes, but just leave it at that. But that when humans sometimes pass and don't go through the appropriate portals, they're left um, um, earthbound spirits, which we call some people call ghosts, and they are trouble makers because they're not in the right place. Those so folks that need help going passing through, and there there are people who do that kind of work, um, and. I have rarely found that with animals, but there, but there are, especially in Europe, you hear of in some of these old castles or towns that there's a these ghosts that are dog, you know, animal ghosts, um, pet ghosts. Um, but I, I find that to be much, much more rare than with humans. And um, I have the only time I've dealt with this situation where someone had had a cat that had a very sudden death, and there was a lot of of uncertainty about it. Um, and when I checked in the animal had passed and the way that I, um, the work that I do, the metaphor that has come to me is that we leave our bodies um, and our spirit is still around and there's still, and then we go through a second portal and this is a wrap up time. And then it's just light energy. It's, it's we can't feel it anymore. Um, that's what I've experienced. So um, this cat was in between the two portals and he was a little discombobulated, but what I realized is like, he he would absolutely make his way there. There was no question. It's just that he was processing the suddenness of it. Like he, like he felt where, he felt it somewhere over there. I'm not seeing it yet, but I'm still just like, whoa, you know, regrouping from this sudden exit. And, um, and so I just helped him with that. But generally I, 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 I will do that work, but, but not, but I, I feel mostly feel like that's that's there, this is here. And unless there's some, some like somebody like just couldn't couldn't feel peace with what they did. So some I'll do that too. Is we'll, we'll we'll contact the animal and see where that you know they'll come and they'll and, and they'll they'll um uh let the person know their experience, like what happened. And I had one case where um, they're like, oh, you know, everything's forgiven. The other one is like, well, there's a little bit of stuff here that, you know, you might want to consider learning from. Like the animal told the person, these are something to, to learn from that you weren't seeing, that you can see now, and as a way to help them process through it. So um, we're going to um, wrap up here. Um, there's a lot more, but um, that will have to be another presentation. And um, really appreciate you all coming. Um, just uh just thank you yeah um animals nature we're here all together on this planet and they help us in ways that i think we you know we really couldn't imagine so um i'll i'll say bye for now <laughs>